All right, we're going to get down to some business. Uh, now we're going to get some serious things. We, one of the big conversations that's happening in our country right now is Internet security, global security, terrorism. How do we stop it? How do you balance privacy for the American people with security for the American people? I want to introduce you to a man named Stephen Hooper. He's a professional, uh, professor of global security and intelligence at Emory-Riddle Aeronautical University College of Security and Intelligence in Prescott, Arizona. Professor Hooper retired after 30 years with the Federal Bureau of Investigations, and everything's an acronym in the government. In the government. He was in the ASAC with the JTTF, which is the Assistant Special Agent in Charge for the Joint Terrorism Task Force. He was also in charge of the National Security Branch of the FBI Phoenix Field Office, where he led operations for intelligence counterterrorism and critical incident response programs. He was chief of threat monitoring unit for the FBI's counterterrorism division and led the Russian organized crime task force in Budapest, Hungary. This guy's gotta be a lot of fun at parties. Um, uh, Professor Hooper conducted Soviet counterintelligence operations during the Cold War. Professor Hooper's law enforcement experience includes tactical and SWAT operations, executive protection and intelligence operations. Additionally, Professor Hooper was a special agent with the United States Secret Service working counterfeiting, fraud, and executive protection. And uh, I've had the pleasure of getting to know him. He's been on my TV show a couple of times, been on the radio show a few times, a wealth of information, and a genius in this field. So please welcome Professor Hooper. Thank you, Michael. Thanks. Nice. All right. I tend to walk and talk, so I'll be walking. I can't sit. I want to touch on three things. Well, thank you for having me. I, uh, I appreciate when a lot of people want to hear about what's going on out there in the national security world. It's so important. And teaching up at Embry-Riddle at the College of Security and Intelligence, it's so uh, enjoyable to stand in front of a classroom of young people that want to do what I did, that want to take on that task, that want to be the next generation of national security for the country. It's, uh, they're awesome kids and uh, they're excited. And so I say the same to you, thank you for your interest in this, it's, it's important. So I want to touch on three things. I'm going to touch on the digital age, because we're going to lean towards the, the cyber and national security, and how the evolution of national security is impacted by all of this. We'll talk a little bit about FISA. Who's heard of FISA? If you haven't, you haven't been paying attention. It's all over the news. And then we'll end with some expectations and try to get an understanding of the changing expectations of the national security world, whether it's the FBI, the CIA, so forth. Because the expectations have changed, and, and we'll end with that. So first of all, what's the number one word used as a password in cybersecurity? Password. You don't have to go any further than that to understand that the culture of security needs to change. Not just the physical security, not just our approach to security, our response to national security. The culture of security needs to change. People need to understand that security is your role too. So some of you are old enough to know, to, to think back to the 60s and 70s when there was lots of violence, lots of protests, and lots of national security issues. And the reason we know that is because of TV. Prior to that, World War II, you didn't see that kind of stuff. You didn't see the, the protests, the anti-war, and so forth. When TV came along, it shows you the media and the digital world, back then not digital, but all of a sudden it was brought into your living room. The gurneys with the bodies on them, the scenes from Vietnam, the shooting, and so forth. It was in people's living room now, and people got enraged because they saw American soldiers on a battlefield. So fast forward, the violence through the 70s, then into the 80s, which was the height of the Cold War. And now national security became a, a big deal. 
The Soviets were very active, people here, people in other countries, they had spies everywhere. CIA, FBI focused on that. Fast forward to the 90s, and two major events occurred. One was in, on February 28, 1993. Anyone know? World, first World Trade Center. They were here. Omar Abdel Rahman, the blind sheikh, and his band of brothers, including Ramzi Yosef. But how did we address it? We identified who did it, arrested them, prosecuted them, put them in jail. We're done. Law enforcement, that's how we did it. That was the expectation. Find out who did it and lock them up. But what else happened in the 90s? That's right, the internet. And the, with the internet comes a whole new set of crimes. The internet expanded the existing crimes, then added additional crimes. So once the internet came along, there needed to be somebody to approach internet crimes. So you're going from the Cold War to the internet to terrorism all happening at once. But through the 90s, we kind of stayed the same. Our approach was the same, just keep working those cases. But then, of course, 9-11 happened. And that's when national security changed. So we'll touch on, and, and, and that's when the expectations changed. So let's run through FISA a little bit. FISA goes back to 1978. The 60s, we talked about the violence in the 60s. The government, under the orders of the president and the attorney general were routinely monitoring communications by American citizens. Anti-war activists, subversive groups, the Weathermen, Martin Luther King, civil rights activists, they were just out there doing it. So in 78, they said this all has to come to a stop. It was a big court case, and they changed the laws. In 78, they set up the FISA court. It was set up to protect American citizens from the government monitoring them. It was set up because the FISA courts gave the approvals to monitor our adversaries from other countries, counterintelligence or counterterrorism. So they, the new laws after 78, limited our ability to monitor Americans. It didn't open it up. There's a misnomer out there that FISA laws allows for that. It doesn't, it prohibits that. And after 9-11, they added the whole Terrorism and Patriot Act. So there's your evolution of digital monitoring. Uh, technical surveillance, if you will. But like anything, it can, be, it can be abused. And so it's a tool. Think of FISA, the FISA court, as a tool to protect the country from adversaries outside of the country. So that's what I'll end it with, is the changing expectations. Remember, through the 70s, 80s, and 90s, it was the old seaman lock man up. Bad thing happens, law enforcement shows up, arrest, prosecution, they go to jail, case closed, on to the next one. After 2001, the expectation changed. The expectation was now to prevent it from happening. It was no longer good enough to wait for it to happen, show up, find out who did it, arrest them, prosecute them, and put them in jail. 
Because every time there's a terrorist attack, what's the first thing you see in the media? Intelligence failure. Were there signs? How did we not know? Could this have been prevented? It's, a, it's, it's a, just a media blitz on national security, on all the agencies that are out there working endless hours trying to stop that next attack. Why? Because the expectation changed. So understand that when you hear about law enforcement, understand that it's not your grandfather's law enforcement anymore. Law enforcement has taken on a whole new concept of security with the expectation of prevention. That's why you hear everything about intelligence, trying to gather intelligence before it happens. So that's the point I want you to go away with. The expectations changed in 2001 of prevention versus response. So thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. I could go on for hours.